Hello, this is Saul, and today I want to show you how to create a new data set out of whole cloth from nothing at all. We're going to use Visidata a little like a graphing calculator. And so if we create a new sheet with the Shift A command, and they'll ask us how many columns we want. So this is two empty columns, as we see right here. And we can rename these columns. Let's have the with the caret command caret, and then they'll edit the column header. So this is going to be the X column, and let's make this be the Y column. And we can add a row. We'll add with the A command, adding a row. And we can go ahead and edit this value to, I don't know, 1, and uh, 2. And we can do this a lot, but this is kind of a, a pain here. If you wanted to actually just put some, enter some data, that's how you would do it. If you want to add a new column after the fact, a blank column, you can use the ZA command, and now we have another blank column. But we're going to make this a little more programmatic and use the power of Visidata to make this easier for us. Let's stop here, let's delete this empty row, this blank row, and hide this other column here. And so let's say that we wanted to graph the sine function. Uh, we would start by adding a bunch of rows here. Let's say we want to have, I don't know, 360 data points. And so we'd add 360 rows with the GA command. That's adding a certain number of rows. We're going to add 360. And there we have 360 blank rows. And let's say we wanted to, now we want to set the x-axis to um, the actual values 0 to 360. If you don't know what a command is, you can use the menu system that's been built in since version 1.1 with a space bar. And then it'll show you all the commands that visit it has in a nice hierarchical menu, menu format. And this one is under modify. And we go over to set column. And it's actually modify set column sequence. And you can see that there's the command right there. It's gz equals. That's the command sequence to set the x column for all 360 rows. It tells you what's going on in the help to the result of the Python sequence expression. Press enter, and then we're doing that command. And so we're going to set it to range of 360. This is just a Python range. And enter. And now you can see that the x column has those values in there. And we're going to type that column as a number. Boom, now we've got that filled out. Now we want to set the y column to the, um, let's say, the sign, as we were talking about, of that uh, the x axis here. There's a couple of different ways we can do that. So if we use the equals command to make a new column by expression, this is a derived column, and we can set it to the sign of the x column here. And that will create a new column that's a derived column with the sign of the x-axis there. Is a, as a derived column, can't be edited. If you try to edit it, it'll let you do it. But uh, if you put something in there, then it will say it can't be changed. Let's say that we wanted to make this more like an actual data set and just start with the sign, for instance, in the y, y column here. The other, other way we would do this is we use the g equals command. So equals created a new column, and g equals is going to set this column to the expression that we're going to create here. And so if we can also do math.signx here. And this is going to set the, all the values in this y column to that. And you can see they're identical in the two columns. But here, if we actually want to change this value here, we can set it to point whatever we want to. And there, the value has been changed. Let's say that we wanted to plot this now and see what this looks like, what the sine function looks like. So we're going to make the x-axis be the x-axis on the graph by using the bang, the making the key column. And then we're going to plot the plot the actual sign here and with a dot. And then we can see that that doesn't look like the sign that we expected. And the reason is that we are plotting the sine of x in degrees, but the Python sine function, like um, that your graphing calculator, even when it's in radians mode, plots it in radians, and we are using degrees. So let's fix that. And we're, well, I think all we have to do is just set this x column to be the radians. And so we're going to use the same g equals command here to set every item in the x column to the radians of that. And to convert to radians, we make x times 2 times math.pi over 360. It's the standard formula for making radians from degrees. And then it'll change the x-axis to that value. Now this is the x-axis we made be a number, which is an, an integer. So everything looks like it's 0. If we convert it to percent, to a, sorry, to a floating point value, then you can see the actual floating point value there. And you can see that the math.sign function updated automatically. 
And now we can plot this again, same way as before with dot, and that sure enough looks like the sine function. So at this point, we can look at the steps we took to get to this. We can look at the command log with shift D, and you can see all the various commands that we did so far. And we can save this off with just like a control S and save it off as a, I call it a .vd file, but it's just a tab separated file, and like any other tab separated file, but it's got these columns in it. And if we were to save this off, we could replay it. And I'll show you how to do that because we can, one of the tests we have in here is the graph sine cosine no test thing there. We say no test because it's not actually done in automated testing, but it is actually there. And if we were to replay it with the dash P option, replay option, we can also specify an amount to wait between every command with the dash W option here. Let's wait a half second. And if we replay this, this test is basically exactly what we did except for um, very streamlined. We play it and then now we have a half second between every one of the 16 steps in this thing as it's figuring out what it wants to plot. And then at the end, there it is, the sine and the cosine both on the same graph. And we can then interact with it just like we would normally. We can just start using Visidata from here. We can press you know, one to turn the layers on and off, for instance, and we can go back to the data sheet and we in fact even look at the command log to see what all happened uh, from that point. And so there, here we go. That is how to make data out of nothing at all. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.